Hello, this is Tov from Trifo Production with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to showcase the hair tool for Blender, which is a very great add-on. It's not free, it's, it's uh, an add-on you have to pay for, but it's, uh, it's a pretty good price. I'm using the latest version for 3.4, and installation is kind of similar, but there's an extra step to it. I'm going to show you how you can download it or actually install it in the Blender after you've downloaded it. And as usual, I'll leave a link of it below this video. And once again, to install in Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Install, and just navigate to where you've downloaded it. Click on that. Click on the Install Add-on. I've already done that myself. And once you've done it, you'll see it will come up here. Put a check in the box, activate it. And the latest version comes with a hair library of presets and in order to install that it'll come in a zip file so unzip it which i've already done and i've just named mine hair tool uh 2.42 library and that's going to contain the uh hair tool or the hair library and the hair textures and you just um let me go back uh, let's actually double click on that and click in here uh, right click, copy that, minimize that. Then you click on this folder and you left click in there and press Ctrl V on your keyboard and that pastes the address in there and then click accept and then that activates it. Activates the uh, presets for the hair tool. It comes with about, I'm thinking about 16 different hair presets that you can use on your models. Not sure how to use that also in this tutorial. And you can click on save preferences just to be sure it saves uh, that step in Blender. And you just click uh, render missing previews. Sometimes that does help if you open up the add-on in Blender and you don't see any previews of or thumbnails of the hair. Just click on render missing at previews and it'll uh, re-render it, re -render it tongue twister inside of Blender. And then it's ready. Now I'm going to... this pretty much just like an intro to the hair tool but I'm going to go to the um, the steps of actually having <clears throat> the hair put into blender on your model and we're going to delete this cube by having the clips cube selected by selecting the cube left click and then press delete on keyboard and that gets rid of the cube and then shift a on our keyboard go up to mesh then click on Let's use UV Sphere. Uh, press one on our keyboard, scroll up to zoom in on the model. Uh, press tab to go into edit mode. And then, let me see, this is a little bit different. 3.4, the uh, keyboard shortcut is a little bit different from the other versions of Blender, but just bear with me. And to go into X ray mode, uh, press Z on your keyboard. Usually Z just automatically puts it in x-ray mode and other versions, but for this it brings up this uh, pie menu. And just click on wireframe. And then press B on your keyboard, left click and drag across because I want to get rid of this bottom part. And then press delete. And delete vertices. Now we're going to pivot to see a better view of our vertices here. So click and hold down on your middle mouse button and drag your mouse. I want to delete this middle vertice, some vertices here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So press Alt and left click on this set of vertices. And that's going to select all of them up to the top of the top vertice. Press Delete the vertices and that gets rid of that. That's going to be the uh, the base of our hair here. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me get some water to drink. This weather out in Oklahoma is uh, something else. Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> I hope that uh, helps my throat. But we're going to continue. We're going to hold down Alt again. And this time we're going to click on these set of vertices because for the hair tool to work, it needs to find a set of vertices which it would be or have as a root for the hair to come out from. So that's going to be our top part here. So hold on Alt on your keyboard and left click in the middle of these vertices. And that didn't get all of that. That got the wrong part. 
So hold on alt again and try your best. If you can't see the middle part of the vertices, you can scroll up with the mouse wheel to zoom in. Hold on alt again and left click the time we got it. We have to mark this as sharp because that's how the hair tool works. So press control E on your keyboard. And from the pop-up menu, click on mark sharp. When it turns blue like this, that means that's been selected. Now, uh, we're going to go into object mode by pressing tab or get out of edit mode by pressing tab on our keyboard and then Z to go back into solid view so you can see the hair being generated and then once we're in object mode we're going to press control shift H and it brings up this um, menu here we want to choose curves from grid surface left click on that and that gives us our hair now we can't see the uh, strands of hair here but in order to see them we're going to click on a different render rendering viewport here so left click on that icon there and there's our hair now it doesn't look it looks like just kind of strands of hair being separated but in order to get the different or a more believable form of hair here we'll go to this menu left click on that from the pop-up menu see all these options here and uh, the main parts you want to really focus on to get different forms of hair would be this section, which would be the hair settings, and then this part here. So let's go to some of these parameters. We're going to keep these two the same, and we're going to increase the strands so we can get more hair on our scalp. So I'm going to left click and drag in this uh, setting there. You can see that instantly it just looks fuller, which is what we're looking for. It looks like real, actual hair. And the cool thing about the hair tool when it comes to the texture, and I'll show you how you can change the color of the textures also, is that it has this gloss to it, which looks great. I mean, this looks like actual hair. It looks like a wig, but still looks like actual hair. And because these are hair cards, it's not actual an actual particle system. It being hair cards helps it render faster. Now we can increase the strands also, and that gives us an even, even fuller look. Uh, change the offset percentage that causes the hair to grow longer you look at the bottom uh, the offset 2 has two settings here I wonder why this this is for the tip I guess and this one is for the roots okay that's understandable so if you want the tips to be longer change the percentage of this if you want the root to be fuller we're gonna change the percentage right here and it gives us a more uh, more I guess detail in the roots now the percentage of the clump that gives us more of a realistic looking hair uh, appearance because you know that with actual hair it's not perfect it's got some clumping which clumping is just gathering of the hair in different spots in different places so let's increase the percentage of the clumping also you can see as we inc increase the clump it starts to gather in certain places the seed is just the randomization of our hair to increase it or decrease it gives us different different random looking hair uh, settings here which is pretty cool the clump fall off that gives us more different say differentiation I guess that's how to pronounce that and the length of our hair and then the clumping also let's increase that you can see the difference as we increase it it makes it shorter if we decrease it it gives us all these like extra strands at the bottom of our hair which is pretty cool Randomize our spacing also that gives us a better effect on our hair if we increase it it kind of uniform makes it a bit more uniform I guess But it's you can see it's changing the way the hair lays on the scalp Randomized length obviously, you know what that means. We make that more It it kind of changes as we increase and decrease the percentage as we increase it It kind of gives us kind of a choppier unorganized look of the hair at the uh, the tip of it which is cool to see the same thing randomizing the seed now right now it looks kind of flat but that's when the that last thing I should showed you in the profile makes it gives you more of a, of a kind of a I guess a rounder looking strands to the hair so right now it's flat if you change this to round look what happens to the hair round look at that I mean, it just makes it look much fuller. So that is just, this is a pretty cool 
uh, where you can quickly uh, make hair in Blender using the hair tool. And now I'll show you how I can change the color because that's also important. I just go to shading with that hair selected. Just go to shading. Click on that shading uh, set up there. Let's scroll up with our mouse wheel and use our hand tool to kind of move our hair around and pivot with our middle mouse button. And we're going to scroll down on our mouse wheel to bring up this node setting. Now this is uh, the developer really put some thought into how to edit the color of the hair because it's just an instruction here that says tab to edit hair patterns. So with this selected, when it's outlined in white, that means it's selected. So press tab on your keyboard and there you go. Now this is pretty cool because you can change the specular of the, of the sheen of the hair, which is right here. I left click on that, turn it to blue. Look at how the sheen turns from that kind of like brownish color to blue. You can change any color on the color wheel, green, red, uh, maybe see hot pink or purple, I guess that's what that is. And then the actual color there, you can change that too. Left click in there, turn it to green. I mean, this is it's like uh, Gamora looking here from uh, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, turn it to red, you know, blue. Oh, that's a really, really, really deep bluish purple. But yeah, that's how you can change the color in the uh, hair tool settings. This is pretty awesome stuff. This is good stuff. Let's go back to layout. Now I want to show you the presets for the hair. So we're going, we can delete this by having it select and press delete on our keyboard. Left click on the uh, hair mesh or the uh, scalp, delete that also. And the hair tool itself is here. It's on the, I just showed you the keyboard shortcut, but this is where the library is. You can, like I said, this is just an intro to the tool itself. You can do a lot more stuff with it. Uh, but the library itself, once you install, have the library installed, it has all these presets for curly hair, buns, uh, bowl cuts, uh, a lot of good settings. Not only for hair, but for eyebrows also, and mustaches, beards, goatees. And if we scroll through, we click on one to have it um, insert into a scene for Blender. Just select any hair you want and click on the append. And it should come right up. There it is. Yeah. Let me see. Hopefully, in case not, hopefully my system isn't freezing up. But let's uh, press one on our keyboard. And then change the... Oh, this is... Okay, there it is. See, it's kept the color, hair color setting that we had before, which is fine. But let's uh, see a little bit better by changing the world color. Yeah, there it is, yeah. So, yeah. So, the hair tool is... Pretty impressive. It does a great job, a nice, quick, easy, fast job of creating hair from scratch or having, you know, using the presets. It You can bake the hair. I think you can add animation to the hair also. If you left click on that, can you do that? But yeah, run spring physics. But like I said, this is just an intro. For me to go through this, that would be a more detailed um, tutorial. But like I said before, this is an intro to the hair tool. And it's a good thing to try out if you want to make uh, quick hair in Blender, whether it's be, sometimes I use this uh, kind of hair, hair cards for uh, animations or for games. But for me, this would be good for like doing in a movie, you know, a real live movie uh, scene. Actually, it works, works pretty good. And uh, that's today's Blender Quick Tip. And hopefully you guys will try it out. And uh once again, I really thank you guys who have subscribed to the channel, You've, who've watched the video because it's really helping the channel grow. Really thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for all your help, all of your support. And I hope that uh, these tutorials are helping all of you that are watching. And thank you guys who have subscribed in the past, those of you who are subscribing now, and those of you who will subscribe in the future. And I will see all of you guys on the next one. All right, adios.